there. Three, two, and one. Well, Mayor Weeza, uh, welcome back. I'm Mayor's Monday here, WSAU, WSAU.com. Uh, Mayor Weeza, as always, uh, joining us live in the office uh, in the official mayor's capacity and absolutely no other capacity. We want to throw that disclaimer out there again, uh, just to be absolutely clear that we are we're talking city business, and I uh, tell you what, city business these days uh, got uh, you got a lot going on down there. You got some things going on there. We always got, got a lot going on, Michael. Yeah. You know this. Exactly. Uh, I think something occurred to me though. I think we need some like intro music. Can you work with your team and try and get intro music for each of the mayors? Uh, you know, oh, I, I I I got what you're saying. You want your own walk up music? Yeah, yeah, that. I mean, you I'm not your, walking up, but well, yeah, yeah. in theory, in theory, um, and you want your own walk up music. Uh, I think next we all should have them. I mean, don't okay. you think we deserve it? Yeah. All well, the obviously, all the hard work, just a little, little walk up music. Obviously, Mayor Katie's is going to be some sort of Wu Tang Clan music. <laughs> um, I would suggest, I would suggest Mike Weeza has uh, Billy Squires' The Stroke. You think uh, so? I, I, that's, that would be my suggestion. I might have uh, a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> well we, we would prefer I, I was thinking more you know along lines of elvis or sinatra or if i had to okay. some 80s hair band maybe yeah okay yeah elvis i could see i could see elvis we're we'll, we're gonna work on that for next time we'll we'll work on that maybe i'll <laughs> surprise you all right well we, you know you. We, we've always got a ton of stuff going on Indeed. Uh, as you know the groundhog saw his shadow so that means six more weeks of winter. For what that's worth, yeah. Honestly, we have six more weeks of winter all the time. Mm -hmm. So in uh, in honor of February 2nd, uh, I made ground pork patties, ground hog, if you will, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for dinner that evening. Um, they were delicious. Yes, yes. And then Indeed. we'll see if the next one, next groundhog next year has maybe a better attitude. Uh, maybe. Like a little bit. Yeah, maybe, maybe a better attitude next year. You know, it, that's not such a bad thing, right? It, hey, um, yeah, it's been an it's unseasonably a... warm winter, mm -hmm. uh, but all of our winter sports recreation areas are are open. Our Toboggan Hills, the Sled Hill. By the way, last year we implemented the Sled Share, or the Sled mm -hmm. Library. That's still very, very successful. So if you don't have a sled, or maybe you're just passing through and you want to come and use our Sled Hills at Iverson, we have sleds you can borrow. Uh, and still have fun. Bring the whole family out. We've got the toboggan runs there, skating rink, warming houses. Um, all of those things are still very active. I know out in the county, they reopened the snowmobile trails, cross-country ski trails are still going on. Uh, fisheries are still going strong as well. So there's still a lot of winter activities you can do in the Stevens Point area. Yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, you're always, always open for business, whether that be uh, outdoor recreation in the uh, in the winter, in the summer, in the fall, you got plenty of it going on. Uh, one one uh, quick thing, of course, uh, because outdoor recreation involves golf and uh, you have uh, you may have heard of it. You have a tournament coming up in. Uh, it, in is that July. the putt putt thing that we've got going on? No. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, only these the guys are these guys event. are these guys are putt putt experts. Let me tell you what. Uh, anything <laughs> over three, and and they're they're angry at themselves. Uh, the the uh, USGA Senior Open uh, Championship. Yeah. Obviously, uh, we learned uh, last week that uh, Century World's not even going to open to the public until after July fourth. That's how seriously you guys are taking this in Stevens Point. Uh, give us just a couple of quick updates on how the uh, preparations are going for that. So again, if you haven't heard about this, um, you're probably not paying attention to the news very much. But uh, over the last week of June, first week of July, we are hosting, Century World is hosting the USGA Men's Senior Open. We're expecting nearly 70,000 visitors during the course of the event from the media and the, the players, uh, their staff, spectators. Uh, it's going to be a massive event, unlike anything central wisconsin has seen in, in my lifetime at least so we are coordinating with every resource available uh including the convention and visitors bureau who's working with convention and visitors bureaus uh convention and visitor bureaus yeah i think so i think that's uh, proper yes. and, <laughs> and the hospitality industry all throughout the central wisconsin region uh to house these people to 
uh, make sure that they have food and, and restaurants that are properly staffed, transportation routes. Uh, we're working with our public works department, uh, along with the Department of Transportation, as well as all of the representatives at Century to make sure that the event goes off as smoothly as possible, making those preparations for uh, that influx of people. We have relaxed the short-term rental regulations within the city for that period of time so people can uh, rent out their house or rent out a room in their house to visitors that are coming in. Uh, of course, there's still some permitting and inspections involved, but we streamlined the whole process. We've got uh, bus services and shuttle services, along with expanded parking areas for all of the media. This is going to have international coverage. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's going to be a massive deal. And really, it's all hands on deck. Our police department has been working uh, with all of the emergency services agencies in central Wisconsin and beyond to make sure everything is properly staffed. Because as you know, the tournament comes to a climax in, over 4th of July weekend, which right. is Riverfront Rendezvous, our largest normal event of the year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to have two of our biggest events falling on the same weekend, which is going to be uh, quite a handful. But I'm confident that, uh, you know, we meet periodically to make sure all of the uh, needs are addressed. All of the equipment mm -hmm. is going to be in place, all of the permitting that's needed. Uh, to make sure this event goes off without a hitch. And I can guarantee you that that is Century's number one priority. And it is also the number one priority of the city to make sure that those 70,000 visitors to Stevens Point in central Wisconsin have the best experience they possibly can. There's still volunteer opportunities. I know Century World uh, has a volunteer sign up. Mm -hmm. So if you are able to, um, you could probably get to see some of the golf event. But helping out with the tournament, uh, as you can imagine, with that many people, we're going to need a fair amount of volunteers, um, lots of opportunities to mix and mingle with some of golf's greats, um, or you know, maybe get on national TV through the golf channel <laughs> or, or whatever it happens Or NBC, to be. yeah, absolutely. But yeah, it's, uh, it's a big deal, and we're really, really looking forward to it, Michael. If you want, um, I could probably rent out my couch here in the mayor's office <laughs> if you wanted to uh, come down and visit. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm, it's it's something I want. I, I hope I get to take in, you know, in one form or another. Uh, but yeah, the way uh, the way it's it sounds is this is a, an event that is taking a lot of planning. And, it, and of course, it's good to hear that uh, everybody in the city is uh, playing ball, so to speak, on this, because uh, it, it, it is going to be a, a great first impression for uh, all or an opportunity for a great first impression uh, for all of central Wisconsin. Is, uh, one, is golf, can you still refer to golf as playing ball? I mean, there is a ball involved, but there it's is. Really, you know, like baseball or softball mm -hmm. or football, maybe basketball, uh, where the ball is more prominent. Yeah, can I'm going to say, say I'm going to say yes, because you're still controlling the ball. You know, it, it, it's it may not be doing what you want. <laughs> that, that's <it> debatable. <laughs> you're attempting may, to control the ball. Yeah, attempting. If you're lucky, like, maybe yeah. we should call it clubbing. Right. There we go. There Everybody's we go. okay with going clubbing. Indeed. <laughs> Why not go clubbing? Uh, why not go clubbing on ice? You can do there that, you right? Go. You can do well, that. It's more suited for polkas, though. Yeah. But you know, we're polka having clubs. A, I think it's now our fourth annual yep. uh, polkas on ice coming up here in just a couple of weeks on, on uh, February 19th, I believe it is. Uh, downtown Stevens Point on the square. And, uh, it's all sorts of things. You know, it's grown. That event has grown so much over the last couple of years. It started out as two young ladies, uh, Lily Perlock and uh, Jessica Caves, who did a little video doing the chicken dance on the square on the ice skating rink. And it turned into polkas on ice. And people have been jumping on board. Last year, we had a snow sculpture uh, with Jeff Schobert, who uh, runs the snow art zone. He's got some wonderful snow sculptures that he does. He's going to do a, a snow sculpture again this year. We have polka music. Uh, we have Polish foods, hot chocolate, drinks. Um, it's quite an event. And that's going to be Sunday, February 19th, down in the public square. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and again, it, the story behind it, it, it's it's one of my favorites that, that we get to <laughs> tell every year because uh, you, you hear about buildings or ideas that basically started on the back of a of a bar napkin. Well, uh -huh. this is the modern day version of it because it was a couple of people get just getting together like on Facebook and all of a sudden 
something that was a joke or might have been said tongue in cheek is now a legitimate event that is bringing people to Stevens Point. Yeah, and it's a pretty big event too. Last year, um, I don't know if you saw this, but we had the Polish Mandalorian out on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, Mandalorian, for those of you who don't know, it's a Star Wars reference, but mm -hmm. uh, j just suffice it to say, it was pretty cool that he did a video um, congratulating us on our Polkas on Ice. And the Polish Mandalorian, of course, is well respected throughout the galaxy. Mm -hmm. um, the you know the superhero, if you will, of the Polish people. Uh, if you got a chance, look him up on YouTube. Uh, I'm sure you'll find the Polish Mandalorian out there. And we're hoping to get him here someday, but I don't know if it's going to happen this year. Yeah, and, and again, it's something that I know a lot of people look forward to. Uh, our own Jeff Hines, the Poke King here. Uh, his office is just downstairs. In fact, uh, the last thing I do once I once we end here is I'm going to go downstairs and make sure that he knows about it as well, because uh, it's again, it's an event. It's becoming the event uh, in central Wisconsin for uh, for Polka fanatics. A couple more things before we let you go here. Uh, obviously, uh, your city has been in a, a unique position here the last few months uh, regarding street construction and road projects and uh, you have a chance now for voters to have their say in two more projects coming up with the spring election give us a quick overview of uh, of what those are well, sure let's go back a little ways because it's gonna give you some background on, on why we're doing it now um the voters had a referendum question brought to the them uh in regards to whether or not the city of Stevens Point should go to a public referendum on any transportation-related project that exceeded a million dollars. That passed. So now we have to go to a public vote for every project that's over a million dollars. It was targeted primarily towards Business 51. However, the wording is such that every project now has to go to a public vote, including all of our standard regular projects that we do or projects related to developments that have nothing to do with business 51. And in November of 2022, we had four questions on the ballot, all transportation related to normal, two related to development. Of course, of course, those passed. Um, so 2023 is set. However, 2024 road projects, including the regular road projects that we've been planning on for five years that normally just get approved through the, the capital budget process, which would happen normally in September or October of 2023 for 2024. Now, because we have to go to a referendum and there is no election in November of 2023, we have to use the April election, which is coming up in just a few months. Mm -hmm. The deadline for that April election was actually January 24th. So effectively what we had to do is we had to know on January 24th what we were going to do in the summer of 2024 so we could get it on the ballot, hope for approval, and then go through the normal process after that. So we'll have two referendum questions on the April 4th ballot, both relating to normal routine work that we do in the city. But of course, those projects exceed a million dollars. Neither one is related to Business 51. These are standard road construction or reconstruction and repairs. Um, so we're hoping to get community support again, uh, knowing that these projects have been planned for and this is our routine work. If they fail, those roads just won't get fixed or replaced and they'll continue to deteriorate. Um, so I really hope that the community gets out and supports those. And again, we're only doing it in April because there is no November election. Right. Uh, this is an anomaly year. And we'll be back on track in 2024 uh, with all of those future road projects. And I know one thing that uh, some of the residents had brought up during the meeting where you uh, where you approved this was, uh, again, why is this being brought so quickly? Because it was brought directly to council. It didn't go through some normal uh, processes. But I, as you kind of uh, alluded to there, it's because you're on a little bit of an abnormal timeline and and of course everybody is still getting used to this new uh this new way of doing business if you will right yeah you know, yeah and, and it was because of that goofy timeline that we had to do it. we also had to consider uh, a spending referendum because anytime we would have a shortfall in 2024 we need to have that referendum approved in 23 
Um, I'm not in favor of it. I spoke several months prior to this talking about how we have other options, uh, but we wouldn't be doing our job if we didn't present all of the options to the Common Council. Um, I had been speaking several months prior saying that we're working with the state to try and get some reform in the state budget. Uh, of course, now that is public knowledge and uh, the, the state has come out uh, along with the governor saying that they're looking at this. I'm confident that the state is going to make some changes, not needing us to go to a spending referendum. Uh, but yeah, we've been talking about it for a few months. I, I mentioned that uh, several times that I was not in favor of that spending referendum and council chose to do nothing, uh, to mm -hmm. take that no action on it. So we will not have a spending referendum. Uh, if there is some sort of shortfall that we can't foresee in the 2024 budget, we've got a healthy savings account. We call it our fund balance. Um, and we would just pull a couple hundred thousand dollars out of there to make ends meet one time if we had to, just like you and I would do on our normal budget if we had yeah. a short month or a short year. Absolutely. So uh, if uh, residents want more information on the two questions that are going to the ballot, which again, for clarity's purpose, are the questions related to two separate road projects uh, in Stevens Point, not related to business 51 that is still you're still work, doing some work on that in the background i uh presume we we um, are as a matter of fact they they can uh, the director contacted me last week to try and get some of that stuff moving forward again um obviously we can't do any spending greater than a million dollars prior to a vote by the public uh, and we won't do that of course but mm -hmm. um yeah but if they want information on those two referendum questions that are normal routine work uh you can watch the meeting or you can contact the director of public works here at the city, or you can contact my office. Mm -hmm. And again, uh, you've got, uh, you're, are you going to have information on the website as well? Because I know the other thing that somebody had brought up was, uh, you know, you said this has been planned for some time. Generally speaking, cities have about five years worth of uh, construction projects mm -hmm. planned out at once. So people can go online and see here's the plan for the for the next few years correct right if you if you go to stevenspoint.com and search for capital budget um we've got a spreadsheet that carries all of our capital projects out about five years we only approve one year at a time but to be properly planned for we put those things in queue if you will uh to make sure that we know what's coming up next year the year after the year after that absolutely well mayor mike we always appreciate the time Look forward to uh, to chatting again next month as well. And uh, again, next time around, just be prepared. We might have some walk-up music for you. Okay, we walk-up music. And, and next month being March, I think we're going to have to dress in green, maybe some <laughs> leprechaun-type things for St. Patrick's Day, right? Maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thanks again, Michael. I appreciate it. Absolutely.